So by now, this truck right here probably doesn't need an introduction, but it is the Chevy Colorado ZR2 or ZR2 for all of you south of the border. Now, if you watch TFL truck, you've already seen this thing a bunch of times in all kinds of different situations. So why are we still testing it? Well, the boys down in Colorado, there's one thing that they don't really have that I have a ton of here in Ontario, and that is thick, deep mud. So we're going to take this ZR2, we're going to sink it in the mud, and we're going to see how the truck does, but almost more importantly, we're going to see how these Goodyear Wrangler Duratracks handle in the slick stuff. essentials out of the way. So the ZR2 has a two inch lift compared to a standard Colorado. The track is three and a half inches wider. The approach angle is 30 degrees thanks to that new bumper up front. The departure angle is 23.5 degrees. Also thanks to a custom bumper that only comes on the ZR2. And the brake over is also 23.5 degrees. Now all of those are fairly respectable off-road numbers. The biggest issue I would say in this truck is the ground clearance. So ZR2 gets 8.9 inches of ground clearance and while that in and of itself isn't horrible, that's the exact same number that the standard Colorado gets. And when you look out back, the, the differential and the bottom of the shocks, the, the shock mounts at the very bottom, they do sit pretty low and they all sit at the same level. So there are three different points that you could really get hooked on essentially. But probably the biggest deal here today with what we're about to do are the tires. So these are Goodyear Wrangler Duratrack tires and they definitely pronounce themselves on the road. You can hear them. Uh, they're a little bit heavier than the, you know, stock Goodyear Wranglers that come on a regular ZR, or sorry, a regular Colorado. Um, but the trade-off for traction is pretty noticeable. I've already done some kind of light mudding here today and nothing has slowed these tires down. So now we're gonna go run up the trail into the thickest mud I have and we'll see how they hold up. I'm also gonna do my best to go nice and slow up the trail because the real way to test tires in the mud is creeping through the mud. You know, any tire will go through the mud if you hit it fast enough. So we're gonna try to avoid, uh, you know, momentum being our uh, sole reason why we make it through. And we'll see if the tires can't just claw and grip their way and pull us through. Oh, and another important piece of off-road gear on the ZR2 are locking differentials in the front and the rear. All right, this is the beginning of this mud trail. It runs down a hydro line. And essentially right here, it's just big, deep ruts, which we've dug in here from running multiple vehicles down and the power company has come down with trucks, so they've dug these out. And I mean, so far the ZR2 has no issue. And, and I think the first thing that's noticeable is how good the damping is. Uh, the shocks in here, they're the Multimatic DSSV spool valve shocks. Um, they're pretty amazing, you know. We, we drove, I drove up here in this truck this morning on the highway, and on the highway, it barely distinguishes itself from a regular Colorado. You know, the, the shocks are nice and firm, and they don't feel spongy or, or, you know, really loose. And then you get out here in these ruts, and you start kind of crashing down and over, and you just never feel like there's a harsh bang, you know? The, the damping is so good, and that, that in and of itself is confidence inspiring because you just know you can handle big obstacles come crashing down the other side, and it's not like you're gonna be punished on the interior. Before we set off here, we're gonna go down into four-wheel drive low. We're gonna lock the rear end, just like that, and then we'll even lock the front end. Now it's all locked up, traction control is off, 
and we're about to jump into the deepest section here. Let's go. So far, this ZR2 has been pretty unstoppable, but here comes the real deep stuff. Oh yeah, oh she's digging now. She wants to dig in. Oh, but it's still clawing. It's going really slow. Okay, I'm building a bit of speed now. I'm gonna try to keep it going. Oh, it's throwing lots of mud. Oh, there's a hole there. Wow, these dirt tracks just claw, claw, claw. Just grab their way through. And we're almost out, we're almost out, and we're out. Hello. Now we got this little rock climb here. Oh, beautiful. So, you know what, when I first dove in there, I felt it grab, and this truck really slowed down, and I wasn't sure she was gonna keep going, but these dirt tracks did the job. Like I said, I did my best to crawl through, and they did exactly that. They creeped right on through. They never lost traction. So, you know what, for a street tire, like I mentioned earlier, they're definitely a little louder than some other all-terrains on the market, but I do believe that you are getting the traction to make it worth it. Um, you know, the, the tread pattern is pretty aggressive, and then they have those really big side biters right on the sidewall that, when you're in that deep stuff, are really helping to, to claw you through. So now I'm just going to run up this hydro line trail a little bit. This is where I've been bringing all the side-by-sides and ATVs lately. It's a pretty fun little trail, fairly open once you get through that big water. And that's the other cool thing about the ZR2, right, is you can crawl in it, you can creep through the mud, but if you want to go fast, you can. Getting a chance to use the power here, that's one of my other complaints about the, the ZR2, is it doesn't feel underpowered, but it feels adequately powered, you know, it never feels super powerful. Uh, the V6 really has to rev up, you know, it makes all of its power basically at redline, so you're almost always really digging into this little V6. And, like I said, it's enough power, but I just feel like Chevy could have done a little more with this truck. I mean, they did a lot, and they did the important stuff, I will give them that, in terms of, you know, lifting it and making it wider and putting good tires on it, but to really complete this package, you would have, you could have used more power. Like the Raptor, no, I'm not saying that this is a Raptor competitor. Every time I bring up the Raptor, people think I'm comparing them, but when you look at the Raptor as a package, that is an engine that you can only get in the Raptor. Well, actually that just changed. But the point is, the Raptor has always been special also with its powertrain, not just with all of the gear put onto it. And I think Chevy could have made this truck just a little cooler, a little more unique with a little bit more power. I also understand you can only do so much or else this truck would be very expensive and it's already kind of expensive. It's it's not exactly a cheap toy, you know, coming in around $45,000 US and then even more here in Canada. Just want to make a quick point about the backup camera here. When your windows look like that and you can't see your mirrors, having this backup camera to help me turn around out here in the bush is pretty dang helpful. Okay, so now we've turned around and I'm coming back down the hill and we're gonna go back into the mud pit. And I do have to be careful on a few of these rocks here. And the other thing is right at the bottom of this hill when you're getting into the mud pit, there is a little bit of a dip and I know I can knock the back end on it. So I'm gonna take a real slow right here. And here we go, back into the deep stuff. Dropping in. There it is. No, nope, no clearance issue at all. Oh man, yeah, these dirt tracks, man. They just bite. I can feel how squishy it is. Oh, hello, here we go. Maybe I spoke too soon. But look at this, I'm working it. I'm working the wheel and I'm getting an inch, inch by inch. Yes, 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 inch by inch. Yes, yes, that is perfect. <laughs> yes, 
Yes, if that doesn't show the tires, I don't know what does. Oh, there was a little break over right there. Good thing I got a skid plate on here. Uh, that was perfect. It really felt like it was getting bogged down, but I just worked the wheel, worked the wheel back and forth. And like I said, having those side biters on these tires, they just have a ton of grip. And then it also doesn't hurt that I can lock both my diffs, get even power to the ground. Um, so, you know what, based on that test alone, I'd say dirt tracks in the mud is a good idea. I didn't get stuck. I was fully expecting to, but I did not get stuck. And that's a real testament to these tires. I really took it easy and just let the tires do their job, and they did. And I can also mention now that they're not aired down at all. You know, these are the tires that I drove here on this morning, and I didn't bother to air them down just to see how they'd run at regular PSI, and they did great. If you did air them down, they would do even better, which uh, is pretty impressive. Well, we certainly got this truck nice and muddy today. And I wanna show you something. I mentioned earlier the shock mounts are one of the lowest points. Well, take a look at that. Look at all the seaweed and grass and crap that they picked up because that is one of the lowest points on the truck, which makes it a spot for high abuse. So I'd say that's mission accomplished. We got the ZR2 here nice and muddy and doing it all at slow speeds, I think really shows that these tires have a lot of traction, even when it gets thick and goopy like that mud was today. So as always guys, make sure you hit subscribe right now and come back to TFL Truck for the latest news, views, and real world reviews. See ya.